There are three money supply measures in the United States. M1, M2, and what's called M3. Of the three money supply measures, M1 is the smallest one. It has cash and checking account money that is held by the public, the public meaning businesses or households, or traveler's checks or money orders. M1 is also the most liquid one. It really means that these are forms of money that can be very readily used to buy goods and services in grocery stores or department stores, or any of this money can be very readily turned into cash. So if you have money in a checking account, then you can just go to your bank and write a check or withdraw money from your checking account and turn it into cash. So M1 is the most liquid of the three money supply measures. M2 includes M1, so everything that's in M1 is also in M2, plus it has uh, savings that are held by the public, uh, so money market mutual funds or money market deposit funds, or if you have money in a CD, a certificate of deposit, that all that is also money that is in M2. The unique part of M2, this part right here, uh, is a little bit less liquid than the components in M1. In other words, uh, if you want to turn that into direct cash, it might take you a few days or a few weeks, or you might have to pay a penalty if you have a CD, for example, a certificate of deposit, and you want to withdraw your funds earlier than the maturity date, then uh, you may have to pay a penalty. M3 includes everything in M2 plus savings held by large organizations, large financial organizations like pension companies or just large banks in general or insurance companies. It also includes euro dollars. Euro dollars are dollars that people have in a foreign bank, but that's still denominated in dollars. So they did not transfer it or convert it into a foreign currency. They are, they're still holding it in dollars, but it's in a foreign bank. Initially, they used European banks, and that's why they're called Euro dollars, but uh, now they can be dollars in any bank in any country in the world. The unique part of M3, so this part right here, the unique part of M3 is even less liquid than the components in M1 and M2, uh, because uh, these funds, the, this kind of money is really held uh, sometimes for pension purposes, so it's held in this organization for a long period of time. And it's not really money that is used to buy everyday groceries or department store items. So the unique components of M3 are not really affecting economic activity right now. They may be affecting economic activity in the future, but not uh, of the current economy. If we were to visualize M1, M2 and M3 by their sizes, we know that M3 has the most amount of money because it includes M1, which includes M2. So M3 can be graphed by this circle here. We'll call this M3. M2 is part of M3. So M2 is inside of M3. So we can say that this is M2. And M1 is inside of both of these two, so you can think of M1 as being right there. So we have our cash and our money and our checking accounts in M1 here. M2 has M1 plus the savings accounts held by the public and CDs and so forth. And then M3. And M3 includes everything in M2 plus these uh, savings held by these large organizations, euro dollars, etc.